Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're diving into AI and user interfaces. Oh yeah. This is gonna be interesting. Really fascinating stuff. Like imagine an AI that actually gets what's happening on your phone screen. Right, not just like seeing a button, but knowing what it does. Exactly. Moving from object recognition to real UI understanding. That's the key. And we've got two awesome research papers to unpack today. Two really cool different perspectives on this. First up, Ferret UI. Grounded mobile UI understanding with multimodal LLMs. From Apple, no less. Yep. Cutting edge stuff coming out of their research labs. It is. And then we'll dig into OmniParser for pure vision based UI agent. This one's from Microsoft Research. Both teams really pushing the limits of what AI can do with screens. Absolutely. But with some pretty different approaches. Yeah, and that's what makes this so interesting, right? You see these different paths to UI understanding. Totally. All right, let's start with that Ferret UI paper from Apple. Okay. What jumped out at you right away? Well, the thing that really got me was how they tackled the visual challenges. Hmm. Yeah, UI is so unique visually. Exactly. Screens, especially mobile ones, are often long and skinny, and the icons are tiny. Compared to the images AI usually trains on. Right. It's like trying to spot a ladybug in a giant landscape photo. So how do they solve that? Well, they came up with this really smart approach they call any resolution. Oh, interesting. Basically, they split the screen up strategically. Into smaller segments. Yeah, so the AI can zero in on those little details without getting lost in the whole layout. Like giving it a magnifying glass for those tiny icons. Exactly. And they didn't stop at just recognizing icons. They really threw the whole kitchen sink at Ferret UI, huh? They did. From basic stuff like object recognition to describing what's on the screen. And some questions about how it all works together. Yep. And here's the kicker. They even trained it to have conversations about the screen. Ooh, conversations. Like basic back and forth about what's going on. So it's not just seeing like a human, but talking about it too. Almost like a UI commentator. Uh huh. I love that. And now, folks, the user is tapping the settings icon. What'll happen next? Right. But, you know, UI isn't just static images. It's all about interaction. Exactly. And that's a big takeaway from this paper, how they trained Ferret UI to understand relationships between things. Like if you tap this, what changes? Exactly. Or how the interface shifts when you switch apps. So going beyond perception to actual interaction. That's the goal. Which makes sense if you want the AI to be able to use the interface. For sure. Now, they also compared Ferret UI to GPT-4V, which is, you know, the big name in visual AI. Yeah, how'd it stack up? Any surprises? There were some interesting findings for sure. Oh. Like on some of those basic UI tasks, Ferret UI actually beat GPT-4V. Seriously. Particularly on Android screens, which are notoriously cluttered. So that specialized training really paid off. Seems like it. But GPT-4V still had the edge for those more open-ended tasks. Right, the ones that need really detailed and nuanced responses. I guess it makes sense. Yeah. GPT-4V is known for its language skills. And here, nuanced means being able to explain how the UI works in a way that's both accurate and easy for a human to get. Makes sense. And it seems the AI evaluator they used really liked that level of detail. So GPT-4V is like the eloquent professor of UI while Ferret UI is the focus taskmaster. That's a great analogy. But even with GPT-4V's edge and nuance, I was impressed by Ferret UI's accuracy. Yeah, being able to pinpoint exact locations on the screen. That's right, what they call grounding. It's super important for making sure the AI isn't just talking in general terms, but actually understands what it's referring to. So it's not just saying there's a button, it's saying this specific button right here does this. Precisely, that level of precision opens up so many possibilities. Like imagine learning a new app and the AI can guide you step-by-step step highlighting each button to press. Exactly. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. Wow, that would be awesome. Wow. Okay, before we move on to OmniParser, any key points we missed from this Ferret UI paper? Well, I think the big takeaway is that Apple has really pushed the boundaries here. They really have. They've shown that by combining specialized training, clever image processing, and a deep understanding of how humans use interfaces, you can create an AI that sees and understands screens in a whole new way. It's mind-blowing stuff. It really is, and it's just the beginning. Okay, let's switch gears now to that Microsoft Research paper, OmniParser. All right. What stood out to you about their approach? 
Well, their focus on reliable screen parsing was really interesting. Reliable screen parsing. Yeah, they're basically saying current methods just aren't good enough. Hmm. Even with super powerful AI like GPT-4V. Right. It's like having a brilliant chef but giving them dull knives. It doesn't matter how smart the AI is if it can't even see the screen properly. Exactly. They're trying to build a better lens for the AI, so to speak. I like that analogy. Oh. Okay, so how does Omniparser actually do that? It's not just one AI model. It's more like a whole team of specialists working together. Oh, interesting. Like a little AI squad. Yeah. Think of it like a group of detectives, each focusing on a different clue. Okay. I'm following. So what are these different AI detectives looking for? Well, one is all about finding those interactable icons. So it's figuring out what can be tapped, swiped, or clicked. Exactly. It's looking for those little visual cues that tell us something is interactive. That makes sense. And what about text? They've got good old OCR in there, optical character recognition. So we can read the text on buttons and menus and stuff. Yep, which is crucial for figuring out what things actually do. But it's not just about reading the words right. It's about understanding what they mean in the context of the UI. You got it. And that's where local semantics comes in. Local semantics. It's another big part of their approach. Instead of just recognizing that there's a button that says settings. The AI also gets information about what that button actually does. Right. It's like having a little tooltip that pops up and says, this button lets you change your preferences. Ah, so it's getting those extra clues that we humans use without even thinking. Exactly. Those context clues are super important for UI understanding. Did this actually lead to better performance, though? Oh, yeah. Their testing showed that adding this extra layer of semantic information made a huge difference. So GPT-4V was able to choose the right actions more often. Way more often. It's like giving it that cheat sheet for the UI. That's awesome. So we've got this team of AI detectives, each providing different pieces of the puzzle. Right. And OmniParser's architecture is all about putting those pieces together. Like a conductor leading an orchestra. Exactly. Making sure all the instruments are playing in harmony. I love it. Oh. So did they actually test this system out? They did. They used a benchmark called ScreenSpot, which is specifically designed for testing UI agents. How did OmniParser do? It crushed it. It outperformed GPT-4V by a significant margin. Seriously. And it even beat some models specifically trained on UI data. Wow, that's impressive. It really shows the power of this approach, breaking the UI down into smaller chunks mm -hmm. and using specialized AI for each part. So it's not just about raw AI power. It's about having the right tools for the job. Exactly. And both Ferret UI and OmniParser highlight that in different ways. Okay. So we've explored both of these papers now. They're both aiming to solve this challenge of AI understanding screens. Right. But with very different methods. What are some of the big takeaways when we compare them? Well, one thing that jumps out is that both papers really emphasize pre-processing. Pre-processing. Yeah, figuring out how to break the screen down into meaningful pieces for the AI. So it's not just throwing a raw image at the AI and hoping for the best. Exactly. They're acknowledging that UI, especially on those tiny mobile screens, is super complex. Like giving the AI a well-organized study guide for the UI. That's a perfect way to put it. And they do this in different ways. Right. Ferret UI with that any resolution trick. And OmniParser with that focus on local semantics. So they're both tackling that meaning problem, but from different angles. Exactly. And it's fascinating to see how those different approaches play out when tested against GPT-4V. Both teams use GPT-4V as a benchmark, but with different results. Which I think highlights the importance of evaluation. It's not just about the AI itself, but how we measure its understanding. Right. Ferret UI shined on those specific UI tasks, like recognizing icons and reading text. Taskmaster. Exactly. While OmniParser excelled at enabling GPT-4V to handle those more complex multi-step tasks. Like navigating through an app to achieve a specific goal. Right. OmniParser was the facilitator helping GPT-4V reach its full potential in the UI realm. So it seems like we're still figuring out the best way to evaluate these AI systems for UI understanding. It's exciting, but there's still a lot to figure out. Definitely we need better benchmarks that really capture how humans use interfaces. It's not just about getting the right answer. It's about understanding intent. Exactly, and anticipating needs. These papers were all about mobile screens. But this tech could go way beyond phones, right? Oh, absolutely. Computers, tablets, even those sci-fi holographic interfaces. Like in the movies. If AI can understand those, the possibilities are mind-blowing. It's like a whole new era of human-computer interaction. Where technology isn't limited by our ability to code. Imagine AI that learns any software 
just by looking at the screen. Just like we do. That would be huge for accessibility. Making tech truly usable for everyone. And think about education. AI tutors that personalize lessons based on what a student's struggling with. Or tools that help people with visual impairments navigate the digital world. It's incredible. And productivity-wise. AI assistants that anticipate your needs based on what you're doing. Automating tasks, finding info, suggesting creative solutions. The potential is massive. It all comes back to that shift from pixels to meaning. We're moving away from telling computers exactly what to do. Towards a world where they can infer our intentions and learn by watching us. It's like giving technology a whole new sense. A sense of meaning. Beautifully put, and as we keep exploring this frontier, who knows what we'll discover. Maybe AI that designs interfaces better than anything we can imagine. It's definitely possible. This has been an awesome deep dive. It really has. I'm walking away feeling super optimistic about the future of AI. Me too. It's moving so fast and the potential is just enormous. And for everyone listening, we want to hear your thoughts. What excites you? What concerns you? Let's keep this conversation going. Absolutely. Until next time, keep on diving.